Shh. Justin Trudeau demands life in prison for speech crimes. Welcome back today to the channel. We are discussing some interesting news, breaking, groundbreaking in Canada with the authoritarian dictator Justin Trudeau cracking down on Canada's Liberal Party, also seeking to incarcerate for crimes that haven't been committed. Well, today is March 12th and we are here. Thanks for tuning in. It's just insane. It's just Justin Trudeau. Just inept Trudeau. Just indict Trudeau. Just indignant Trudeau. It's just incapable, it's just inclusive, it's just incurable, it's just inconvenient Trudeau. It's just inconsistent Trudeau. It's just inauthentic Trudeau. It's just inarticulate, incentivized, just incentivized Trudeau. Give him your money, he'll do what you need. Please, he'll change the laws and put away the free speakers and free thinkers just because he's afraid of what they might say about him. It's just inconveniently, just incorporations Trudeau, just incredulous Trudeau, it's just incredible. Incriminating Trudeau. It's just insidious Trudeau. It's just indoctrinating Trudeau. It's just industrializing. It's just inarticulate Trudeau. You know, he's a former drama teacher. It's just inartistic. Just in drama. Just in trauma. Just in love with Castro. Just kidding. Just a joke. I know. Just in good fun. Just lighten up everyone. Just in the WEF. Just into communism. Just inexcusable. Just insulting. It's just incompetent Trudeau. It's just inadequate Trudeau. It's just incarcerate Trudeau. It's just incinerate Trudeau. It's just a joke, you know? But according to the article by Stephen Moore recently posted, it's to protect, protect children from sexual exploitation. Canada must pass the Online Harms Act, says Prime Minister. I am a parent of two young boys, and I will do whatever I can to ensure their digital world is safe as the neighborhood we live in. Children are vulnerable online. They need to be protected from online sexual exploitation, hate, and cyberbullying. Yes, yes. Everything is about bullying and the things that you don't like. We must then bully. We live in a very weird world where it's wired and it's tired. And it's expired for anybody that speaks against the political party. You can't speak against the party. You have to agree politically on everything. And any disagreeing voices, dissent, are put down into a decent prison. The bill is totally unnecessary to protect children, and it, its real goal is to allow judges to sentence adults to prison for life for things they have said, and for up to a year in crimes they haven't committed, but the government fears that might commit, they might commit in the future. So this is basically a minority report. We're thinking you're going to do a crime, and we don't. your views don't align with our views, so you're going to be in prison for a long time. So it's either obey or enjoy your stay. The Online Harms Act is Bill C-63 and is the most shocking of all totalitarian, liberal, and anti-enlightenment pieces of legislation that has been introduced into Western worlds in decades. This is communism at the cap. No cap. And it is tapping into your primal instincts of be afraid and making you then fear what you're going to say. And this is putting now the censorship on everybody's own lips. Oh, I might, I might, if I say that, I might say this, I might say this, I might say that. Which is the worst kind of censorship because now it blocks your lips and your mind from thinking. And it keeps you blind, deaf, and dumb to whatever is printed. Only you must believe only what's believed. You know what that sounds like? CCP party in China. Well, the liberal government censorship legislation is considered in the context of Trudeau's sweeping abuse of government powers. During after the pandemic, the government subsidies and propaganda set a new watermark in rising totalitarianism in Western societies. And Bill C-63 is meant to bolster the rights of Canadians to express their thoughts and opinions. This is the opposite of expressing our thoughts and opinions. This is suppressing and oppressing and depressing our thoughts and opinions. This is holding people at, at um, with a jail cell in one hand or the a roll of tape in the other. Shut up or go to jail. To make the space more safe and inclusive online. Inclusive is the number one communism term now used to block people with free speech. It is the opposite. It is suppressing people. Inclusion, D-E-I should be D-I-E. Putting people in prison for life, for things they said, is not a crime. But they want to say that you're advocating genocide. Bill C-63 would increase the maximum penalty specifically for advocating genocide from five years to life imprisonment. And what is their definition of hate speech or advocating genocide? It's up to them to decide. I would say that this 
bill here advocates genocide to people who are free thinkers. You are telling journalists, artists, musicians, politicians, free thinkers, and anybody that wants to have independence and freedom and free thought, you're telling them they should shut up or go to jail for life. That is a form of genocide that the government is doing against its own people. In other waking, shaking Canadian news that's so woke the country's gone broke and it ain't no joke, it's on just incriminate the Prime Minister. However, the BC people in BC of British Columbians are now told it's offensive to say the word British Columbians. Oh, oh, it's offensive. It apparently is not inclusive enough to use the word British Columbians. Instead, you must say people living in BC. It's, infend- it's offensive to, according to the NDP government, that it's offensive to indigenous people, or if that's the right term we're not supposed to use anymore. Everything is being blocked. You see, all the words are being taken out of the language to create this new speak, double think, where you're not allowed to think, you have to, everybody questions what they think, and then the new speak comes from Orwell, of course, and you're not allowed, you're not allowed to say anything. You have to correct your word, and there's no, the language is distilled down. And this is what's happening. So, people who don't identify with being from this culture, I guess, everybody wants to cancel culture. So, therefore, they must divide the cultures. And they must pull down statues and cover them in red paint. Because at one point, they didn't like what that person said. If you see red paint, know that is a communism color. And you're being tricked by your own community into Marxist community communism. So for people that don't identify with their own sovereign nations and not consider themselves part of this one, they want to make the language more inclusive to avoid outdated and offensive terms. So they provide recommendations to use different terms for indigenous people talking about living in BC. You can't say British Columbians. You must say, I'm a person living in British Columbia. You can't say British Columbians. You must say, I'm a person living in British Columbia. (laughs) Okay, so this is called bastardizing and retarding the language. To be more inclusive, to be more diverse populations, including my immigrations. British Columbians also exclude other groups such as newcomers and refugees. Right. By saying we're British Columbians, we're excluding newcomers and refugees. That is some nonsense. Furthermore, the guide includes a section of outdated terms to avoid. Please avoid these outdated terms. This I find offensive. The following terms are native, traditional, tribe, band, and original groups. Aboriginal groups. And might as well put original groups in there as well. <laughs> so what if I had a band and we called ourselves the tribe of originals? <laughs> We'd be in deep shit, right? We'd be in jail for, for playing music because we have a cool name. And if I say like, share, and subscribe, if this your vibe and tribe, that's also inauthentically uncool. You see how cancel language happens everywhere and you can't say anything anymore? It's dangerous. So I say say everything and don't let them mute us. See how much that sucks? So the word traditional, knowledge, traditional, territories makes it seem like it's only applicable to the past and not to the present. So therefore they're canceling, they want to cancel the past. They want to cancel tradition. Now that's called breaking up the family unit and breaking up history and culture and where we come from. That's called taking down the patriarchy and the matriarchy and the family unit at all because tradition comes from those places. It's tradition we have Thanksgiving. It's tradition we have Christmas. It's tradition we have these these annual events, whether they're marriage or anniversary. It's tradition. It's what our family always did. And now that's not allowed because that says it's from the past and not inclusive to the present. Check the local nation's website for assistance on checking whether or not ceremonies should include the word tradition or tradition in them. So therefore, if you're having a ceremony and you can't say, oh, it's tradition, that's offensive. Oh my God. These are woke principles that are a joke. The word artifact is also considered no go, no bueno. It's art, it's a fact, it's artifact, it's an ancient piece of work from back in the day. That is also considered uninclusive and it has negative connotations. There's been 750 new outdated words. The British Columbian government is to control speech such as the removal of 750 outdated gender-based terms from provincial regulations in 2022. This is old news. Two years ago when we were all crying about vaccines and, and, and too busy paying attention to what's yellow and blue, 
they changed the British Columbian woke government made these words Ill, now no longer appropriate. Here they are. He. I'm sorry. They eliminated offensive terms like he, she, himself, herself, father, son, and aunt from the official vocabulary of the British Columbian Parliamentary Secretary for Gender Equity. This is crazy. Inclusive language removes barriers to service and protect people's rights. That actually diminishes people's rights. Right to speak, right to think freely, right to communicate, right to speak in your own sense of identity, what we've known as who we are. What about the identity of he and her? What about the identity of him? All those things of herself, of son, of father. You're not allowed to say son and father. You know why? It's biblical. They don't want you praying to Jesus. They want you to hail Satan. This is uh, corrupt at the most high level, and you've been duped long ago. Critics argue that such measures represent government overreach and prioritize political correctness over practicality. It's more so over practicality, the pr political correctness is a way to, to s correct. And by snapping the whip, they bring the barriers in a little bit closer. They tighten the lane a little bit more. They tighten the language a little bit more. They put guardrails up and more than more. So we're down the thin and narrow and we have less freedom, less ability to think, less ability to communicate, less ability to speak. And the less you can talk and share and speak your thoughts to each other and to the world, the less growth we have, the more chained down we are, the more enslaved we are, the less we can speak, the less we can think, the less we can free be, the less free we are. So I say, speak out, stand up. Say your words. Shut them if you need to. Like, share, subscribe. This is my vibe and tribe. If this is your vibe and tribe, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is just a rant in the park. We'll be back. I'm Mark. Bye. I'm a person living in British Columbia.